welcome you guys once again to history class. Today we shall be looking at revision on Cold War. Revision on Cold War. And at the end of the class, we have the following objective to achieve at the end of the class. Now, Cold War, if you can remember vividly, we talk about the Yatta and the Potsdam Conference at the end of the Second World War. And at the end of the Second World War, I made you to realize that some decisions were reached at the Yatta Conference and also at Potsdam Conference. As a matter of fact, the, one of the decisions reached at the Yatta Conference could be actually the bone of contention that actually led to the Cold War. And one of the decisions that was reached at the Yatta Conference that uh, USSR should be in charge or should make the Eastern Europe is fair of if ranks. That Eastern Europe should come under the control of USSR and that elections should be conducted at, in, in Eastern Europe. All right, let's look at the causes of Cold War. Causes of Cold War. Clash of ideology. When we talk about clash of ideology, what do we mean by that? USA was a capitalist country. Why USSR was a communist country. Both of them run different ideologies. USA, capitalism. USSR, communism. So they had clash of ideology. And in this ideology, each ideology had its own peculiarity, its own way of running democracy. In capitalism, there is freedom of press. There is freedom of speech. Individual freedoms are respected. But in communism, there's nothing like freedom of individual. Everybody owns allegiance to the states in communism. So, clash of ideology. And the reason for communism or for Cold War was Soviet expansionism. Like I said when I was starting, no, it was agreed at the Yatta conference that. Eastern Europe should come under the, uh, the control of USSR. But USSR went ahead to impose a government in Eastern Europe. And USA saw this as what? As expansionism of communism in Eastern Europe. And because of that, they felt that, oh, we have been backstabbed. Then we had to do everything possible to stop the spread of communism. Also, mutual distrust was one of the causes of Cold War. Mutual distrust. The USSR was suspecting that USA wanted communism to be destroyed during the Second World War when Germany invaded USSR and they called for USA help, and but the help was delayed. So the fact that oh, we are suspecting USA wanted communism to be destroyed at all cost. All right, what is Truman's doctrine? What is Truman's doctrine? Let's look at what we have on the board. The Truman's doctrine was an American foreign policy whose, state, or whose stated purpose was to contain Soviet geographical expansion during the Cold War. So when we talk about Soviet uh, geographical expansion, we're talking about expansion of communism. It was announced to the Congress by the President, President Harry S. Truman, on March 12, 1947. And it was developed to contain the spread of communism. Further to develop on, and further develop on July 1948, when he pledged to contain the communist uprising in Greece and Turkey. Now, let's quickly have a, a recap on, uh, on the containment cases. Now, the Korean War was the first test of containment policy of USA. Now, like, if you could remember what happened during the Korean War, the North Korea invaded the South Korea, wanted the, the two to be united, wanted the two to become a one entity. And what happened? USA saw it as an avenue to actually contain the spread of 
communism. Remember that the North Korea was aligned with communism, while South Korea was aligned with capitalism. So USA needed to do everything possible to stop invasion or the spread of communism to the South. And we can say categorically that the containment policy here was a success. It was a success. Also, the Cuban Missile Crisis also, but we can say the Cuban Missile Crisis was also a test, but there was a compromise. There was a compromise in Cuban Missile Crisis. But the last one, which was the Vietnam War, was a disaster for USA. It was a disaster for USA because the Viet Cong engaged in what we refer to as guerrilla warfare during the war. All right. Lastly, we shall be talking about the fall of USSR and the end of the Cold War. The three things played out or played a major role in the fall of USSR and the end of the Cold War. Number one, the people's power. People were, now if you can remember, we thought about the Hungarian uh, uprising. We thought about people demanding for freedom in Czechs. And also in Poland. Now, you can remember what happened in Poland. You can remember what happened in Hungary. So, all these were factors that people were actually tired of the Soviet control in Eastern Europe. Also, the problem in USSR, USSR was spending money on the military, forgetting about the economy. And the economy was suffering at that time. So, people back at home in, U, uh, in uh, USSR, they were suffering economically. And the last point had to do with Gorbachev, who actually was the brain behind the end of the Cold War. And it was celebrated by USA, but back at home, it was seen as a traitor. All right, I believe we have had enough insight to what we have learned so far under the Cold War. Thank you for being a client.